So we're back talking about the system time response. So up to until now, we've talked a lot about our system and we've modeled it, lots of different models, and I think we're ready to move on from modeling our system. So we're going to do one more thing with the system itself, and then we're going to move on to control, the controller that goes actually to control the system towards some objective. But first, we need to look at our system. So we've modeled the system, G of S. We're in the frequency domain again. And we have an input. So we're going to look at how the system reacts in the time domain from a unit step input. And if you remember what a unit step looks like, it's pretty much a jump from 0, this is at time equals 0, from 0 to 1. And then it continues to stay at 1 as time goes forward. So if we model this, we get 1 over s as our transfer function for that. So u of s is 1 over s, and we want to see how our system reacts. So essentially what we're doing is we're hitting our system and say, like, turn on the system or you know, put some a large input into it and see how the system reacts. And this is a normal startup condition, or if you have a transient, you're changing from one mode to the next mode, and you want to know how quickly your system reacts and what it's going to look like. So we're going to look at some systems like that, and we need to, to define some terms. So we'll start out with time constant. Okay, and this is, you may be familiar with this from other electronic circuits courses. Essentially, this is, if we're going from you know, zero to some step, it's how long it takes the system time to get to about 63% of final value. Okay, so that's our time constant. We often call it tau, but whenever you define something, just make sure to explain what it is. So here we're going to call it tau, time constant. There's another term we're going to define that is called rise time. Okay. And I think in that one we call it R of T, or sorry, big T, capital T, of sub R. So rise time in this setup. And this is essentially the time that it takes, the time to go from 0.1, so 10%, to 0.9, to 90% of, final, of the final value. Okay, so, you know, that makes sense. So how long does it take to total for, from the beginning to get to the value? How quickly does it rise? And we're looking at that 10 to 90% value. And then the last one is settling time. And we generally call this TS, at least the book does. And it's the time it takes to stay within 2%, so 0 0.02 of the final value. Hope you can see that. So, or to go above 98% and go stay within 2% of that final value. Okay, so these are just terms that are important. So if someone says, oh, but what's, what's the rise time? You just need to know what that means, how quickly it goes from 10% to 90%. And then settling time is within 2% of the final value. Okay, so let's try to just look at some example. And we'll just kind of conceptually understand what's happening here. Say we have a system here. So my objective for the system is to, um, I want to feed Valerie some food, and, um, but she's up here and she's in the air somewhere and I have to actually get it to her so that she will, um, can eat it. So that's my objective here. So we're going to call that y of t because that's our output function. You can define whatever you want. That's the beauty of controls and modeling systems. So we are initially we're not doing anything and suddenly our input comes in and we decide we're going to try to input food, give food to Valerie. So we start at zero and we have a system and it, it's pretty good. It kind of goes up 
a little bit high and then it, it you know, it stabilizes here and then we're actually able to feed Valerie. That's approximately where her mouth is, sure. And so with this system, we can, we're gonna estimate here. So here's our maximum value, the peak value. And so our time constant here would be where it gets to about eh, 60%. We're gonna estimate, we're just trying to show what this would value would be. So say this is approximately 66.7% of this, this value. So our value, the final value here is here. So that's not, that's a little too high. You're right, I know. Okay, so let's try this again. So 60% of our final value, so right here, final value, and then we can call this our peak value here. So that one's here. And we want 63% of our final value. So let's estimate here. So this would be our tau, our time constant. And then our rise time would be from approximately 10%, so here to 90% of our final value, so here. So this value here, of course we'd have to calculate it if we knew this actual expression, but we would call this T of R. So this unit of time is our rise time. And our last thing is our settling time. So we see that it overshoots a little bit, goes back down, and then it gets to about 2% of our, our value. So if this is our final value, we can kind of estimate plus or minus 2% here. So we see that it finally reaches within that 2% at this point. So before we go overshoot, pass it, and then come back. So this would approximately be from here, so from the beginning all the way here, this would be our settling time. Okay, so that's a really basic explanation of those three terms and how you can measure them once you know the time response of a system.